Hello and welcome. My name is Aaron Craig with Beyond Us Games, and in this tutorial, I'm going to be walking you through the steps of coding in how to use a game pad or a game controller in your game. So Game Maker has the ability to use game pads that are uh, like Xbox 360, Xbox One, PS3, PS4 controllers in your game, and the functionality to do that is actually very similar to using a keyboard and a mouse. It's not much different, but it is different enough to where if you don't know how to do it at all, you will probably be lost. So by the end of this project, you will have a working game, something like this, where you can move around, and I'm using a controller here, an Xbox One that I have plugged in, and you can move around, you'll have an animated character that will actually change their animation speed depending on how much you're moving your stick, uh, you can move in all directions, and you'll have a sign that right now the controller is actually vibrating, like if there was a hidden treasure or to show you some danger or something like that. It's vibrating and I can press the A button and it interacts with the sign. So the basic functionality to setting up a game with a controller. Let's go ahead and dive in and get started. First thing we're going to need are some sprites. I have a sprite import tutorial and if you want to watch that the link will be up on the screen but I am just going to go through and import the sprites that I have already done and they are of Sarah, and if you are not familiar with her, she is an opengameart.org asset that is high quality and free to use. Really great, I'd recommend looking them up. So once you have your sprite set up, we're gonna create one more, and it's just gonna be a sign. And I am not an artist, so we're gonna go with a very simple sprite, something that just shows that you can interact with it. So we're gonna draw Something that looks kind of like a sign. And then we're going to fill it in, and it's going to be beautiful. We're going to name this SPR sign. We're going to center it. We're going to come down, and we're going to create an object for actually both of these. So we're going to create an object for Sarah. Click OK. We're going to create an object for the sign, and actually assign this, the, sprite, the sign object, the sign sprite. We're going to make a new room. We're going to come in, and we're going to create Sarah right there, and we're going to create the sign right there. Then we're going to go back into Sarah, we're going to give her a sprite, and this is going to be where all of the code actually happens for our controller. The first thing we're going to do is add an event for our create, drag over some code from control, and all we're actually going to do in here is set the image speed equal to zero because we don't want Sarah to be walking even if she's just standing still. Then we're gonna set a step event. We're gonna drag in some code. So I'm gonna full screen this and we're gonna make it nice and large so that you can follow along with what I am typing. But before we get started, I wanna show you a very crudely drawn left stick of a controller, just to give you an idea of how Game Maker actually accepts the input. So you have your left stick here, and you can move it in all four directions, and actually every direction that you want, but it has a horizontal and a vertical axis. And if you move it all the way to the left, it's actually going to come across as a negative one to Game Maker. And if you move it all the way to the right, it's going to be a one. And it can range between these values and zero. And that allows us to actually do some really cool things, which I'll show you. But then you also want to make sure that it's negative 1 up here, and that you notice it's 1 down this way. And 0 is when you're not touching the control stick at all. But every control stick, once it's been used a little while, or sometimes even brand new ones, actually move just a little bit to the left or a little bit up and down, even when you're not touching it. So we're going to uh, use a function in here that allows us to compensate for that. Now the very first thing that we're going to use uh, is a function called gamepad is connected. And what this function does is it actually checks to see if there's a gamepad even connected to the computer or the game console or whatever it is. Because if there's not, then you might want to show a message or you might want to pause the game because maybe the batteries died or it got disconnected or something. Uh, so you want to check for now, we're just going to say slot zero. There is another function that you can go through 
and you can actually cycle through all of the controllers that are connected to the computer and assign each one a unique slot and a unique variable. That way if you've got like a local co-op game, you can have multiple people playing at once. For now, we're going to do just slot 0 because I have one controller. Then we're going to set gamepad set axis dead zone. And this is what I was talking about uh, with the stick moving just a little bit up or down and not actually being directly at zero. So we're going to set this to 0.1 and this allows it to say basically if the control stick uh, is anything less than 0.1 then it's zero. So unless the, the player is actually moving the control stick a, a, a moderate amount, it's going to interpret everything as zero and it's not actually going to move at all, which is fine. Uh, then we're going to create a variable called left stick threshold, uh, which is a long name, I know. And I'm actually going to, I just typed it out so you can see it. We're actually going to use LST and we're going to assign this to 0.2 and it's the left stick threshold and what that means is we're going to be using a series of if statements just like on a keyboard input if you want to move up and down left and right to say what is actually being pressed where do you want to go and then move that way and this is just going to be a variable that allows us to change them all at once instead of having to go in and change 0.2 to something else later on in the game then we're going to use something called a left stick horizontal variable and this is going to use a function called gamepad axis value. And it's going to be for device zero. And it's going to be GP underscore axis LH. Now, some of this may look a little bit like magic, especially if you haven't done any of this gamepad programming before. So I'm going to go in and open up the manual. And I'm going to show you this is exactly where I'm getting everything from. So you can go in and you can see gamepad input, you can just search for it, which is what I did here. And this shows you all of the buttons on a controller that are mapped that you can use. So you've got the left stick, the face buttons, the start, the bumpers, everything. And they have all constants that you use when you want to start using them. So we're going to be using the left stick horizontal and the left stick vertical and also GP face 1. GP stands for gamepad. And all the functions that you can use are right here. And Gamepad shows you examples and tells you exactly how they work, what they return, and, ex and it's really good documentation. I'd recommend looking at that. So that's where I'm getting it from. I'm not just making it up. <laughs> so we're going to do left stick vertical as well. And again, it's going to be ac Gamepad axis value. 0GP underscore axis left V for vertical. Now we're going to be doing a series of if statements to show, to, to check to see which way we want to move. So the first thing is left stick horizontal needs to be greater than left stick threshold. And if it is, so if you remember on my very awesome drawing here. If we are over to the right more than 0.2, so you know like right about here would be 0.2, uh, then we're going to start moving right because it's actually going to interpret the value of that axis uh, as greater than 0.2 and we're going to begin moving. And once we do that, we can actually use that value to do a really cool thing with our animation character and our speed. So we're going to do x minus equals LST. And this part's going to be kind of confusing. I'll explain it. Multiply it by negative 7. So the reason that we are subtracting and multiplying by negative 7 when we're trying to move right is that the gamepad is going to return a value between negative 1 and 1 for the left stick horizontal. Now when we move right, we actually want to increase our character's x value, but if you remember in math, if we subtract a negative number, it actually turns out to be a positive number, so this works out just fine. And that allows us to move right, and then we're going to have something uh, left stick horizontal is left then, and this part's important, negative LST, because again, remember, when you're trying to go left, you're actually getting negative values from the axis. And we're going to say x minus equals 
left stick horizontal times negative 7. And it's going to be the same thing because this is actually going to be multiplied by two negative numbers, which results in a positive number, which is then what we want to subtract to move left. Math. It can be useful sometimes. So we're going to create a few more. And this is just going to allow us to move in all four directions. And don't forget the negative part here on the LST, because otherwise uh, you'll probably not be able to move in the correct directions that you are trying to. Okay, so we'll go ahead and save this, control S, and in our room, now that Sarah actually has a, a sprite, she has an object we can look at, let's go ahead and press play, and I've got a gamepad controller set up, and let's make sure that it works, make sure I didn't misspell anything. So we have movement, yep. We have very little movement going to the right, so there was an error on my part going to the right, and I'll check that out in just a second. But you can see that we can actually move all the other directions pretty well. So let's go ahead and open up, and where was it? We are attempting to move right here, and... Ah, I see. I actually did LST right here. Whoops. We want left stick horizontal. Otherwise, we're multiplying it by a value of dot 2, which is not very good. So now we can move in all directions perfectly fine. Awesome. Let's go ahead and add in the sprite functionality that's actually going to change as we go along because it has to do directly with these values we're getting back from the axes from the gamepad. So we're going to set sprite index equal to SPR Sarah walk right, which is what I've named my sprite because we're moving right. And we're going to set image index, and this is the part that uses the gamepad, plus equals left stick horizontal. Now what this does is it actually gets this value back between 0 and 1, <clears throat> and then it moves the, the sprite sheet forward that much and that quickly. So this allows you to walk, to, to sneak, to walk, and to run, all while being handled right here by this piece of code, which is awesome. We're going to go ahead and copy and paste this a couple of times. Oof. Formatting issues. Because we're going to be doing similar things, we're going to be changing the sprite and image index, but we want to make sure we change these, so we're going to go left here, we're going down on this one, spell down correctly, and we're going to go up here, and then we're going to change this to actually be a minus equals, because again, if we're moving left, the axis is negative, and minus a negative is actually a positive. We're going to change this to vert, this to vert, and a minus. Ooh. Sorry, guys. Press that insert button. So, now we have a animated character that moves how fast you actually push on your control stick. So you see here, she's moving, she's kind of sneaking, she's kind of walking slowly, then she's going faster, and then she's kind of running, moving fast. So all directions, the animation's working properly, which is fantastic. Last thing I'm going to show you is how to use the gamepad buttons. So we're going to drag in another piece of code here. And the first thing we're going to do gamepad is connected. Zero. So if it's not connected, obviously none of this would work, and if you tried to do it, you might get some errors, which I wouldn't be, you know, wouldn't be a good thing. So we're going to use a collision circle first, and this is just going to say, uh, in a 10 pixel radius around my character, are there any object signs? And if there are, 
you can actually use a function called gamepad set vibration to say slot zero, set the left and the right motor to vibrate between zero and one. So we're going to put them to half vibration. And we're going to say if gamepad button check pressed, very similar to any keyboard input you've done, in slot zero, GP face one, we're just going to show a message right now because it's really simple. This is a sign. Awesome. Then we're going to put one last thing in here. We're going to say if, and I'm going to actually copy this whole thing right here, but put an exclamation point in the in, in the beginning. <clears throat> it says if they're not an object sign in my collision circle, we're going to set the vibration to zero because you don't want it to continue vibrate forever. And then we can actually press play, and we are good to go. So now we have uh, a fully animated character that is moving around, and I can go up to the sign, and now my controller is vibrating, and I can press A, and it interacts with it, which is awesome, because that's a lot of stuff that you can do right there with those just simple functions. So hopefully that was helpful. I am going to put a link to Sarah if you want to download her sprite sheet. I'm actually going to also upload the project that we just did with comments that look like this so you can follow along and you can look at it. And there's also one other thing that I did uh, in the actual uh, project as well that you can take a look at to have her go back to frame one when you're done walking, which looks a lot nicer, but is a lot of a lot of typing, so I didn't put it in there. But you can download that and play around with the project if you like to learn that way. If you guys have any comments, suggestions, or would like to see any of your projects or ideas turn into tutorials from me, please let me know in the comments section below or send me a message. I love to hear from you guys. But until then, have fun making games, and I will see you guys later.